It's such a wonderful day for us to gather day three. And day three of amazing conversations coming from our diversities of experience, diversities of regions, coming, carrying with us the celebratory excitement of what we have achieved, but also carrying with us the anger of our continuing experience of violation of our rights, but carrying with us the frustrations when we face so many barriers and at the same time embracing opportunities for the future. This panel is a panel about the future, and it's a panel about how do we make it happen. At times, we spend time telling how we are marginalized, how we are disempowered, how we are excluded, and we spend time equally making recommendations on what actions we want to see. In this panel, we have an amazing um, team which is going to carry a conversation from the perspective of women creating change every day and who are making it happen every day. I've had the pleasure to know each one of the colleagues and sisters and excellencies and innovators and who are, who are here over the years. So it is really um, a morning that we see carrying ourselves into the future and that future also starts tomorrow because tomorrow we start the intergovernmental meeting. On this panel I have um, the Deputy Executive Director of UN Women, Madam Lakshmi Puri. Uh, we, we are color coded. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> and welcome. Um, as she comes in to say how we are grateful to have UN Women as a partner supporting our forum and to continue to have the leadership of UN Women with us throughout this process. Madam Lakshmi Puri. And a very big greeting from you, uh, from you to UN Women, and from U UN Women to us all, to the women's movement, we salute you, to the NGO, civil society, community that is out there and also here with us in this defining of the future. And of course, where does the future begin? We are talking also by being here about being back to the future that was spelled out at Beijing uh, 20, nearly 20 years ago. That's the future that we need to really evoke and take forward as Nyaradzai mentioned. I would like to, of course, thank all those who made this get-together happen, this conclave, this meeting together of this regional meeting and, and uh, uh, dialogue and conversations happen, but also it's about action because that's what we need. We have the Beijing, we have the CEDAW, we have the Beijing platform for action, and now we are going to have the post-2015 development framework. We also have at this historic juncture another normative framework that we need to take forward the 15th anniversary of 1325, UN Security Council resolution on women, peace, and security, and its successors. So all of that normative heritage that we have and we are building, and that's what defines what women and girls want in their future. And you all have shaped it. We all have shaped it. And UN Women is very privileged to be out there 
with you and also convening you along with governments, along with the private sector, along with all stakeholders in order that this future is realized. Now, the NGO Committee on the Status of Women has done a wonderful job in preparing for this forum. And I have just come from different meetings in the region. I was in Vienna the, looking at the 1325 uh, implementation and how to take this forward at the Austrian parliament. We were also, I was also earlier in Baku, where I was um, addressing the OIC meeting on um, uh, the uh, issue of uh, women in development. And I was in Rome, where the European Union was commemorating Beijing plus 20. So this regional, this regional specificity and diversity at the same time is something that we need to also reflect in our discussions here because whilst Europe is in the lead on gender equality and women's empowerment, globally speaking, you may not think that you have made enough progress, that you are not there in that future, that ideal future, but Europe is in a better place than most of the rest. So that's, that's something that we, as Nyarat Zai said, we celebrate. We celebrate that in terms of poverty, women's poverty, and if you look at the 12 critical areas of Beijing, in terms of women's poverty, we have conquered a lot of that. In terms of women's role in the economy, you have come a long way. Labor force participation is perhaps the highest uh, compared to uh, the developing countries. You also have participation in decision making and, and um, in, in, in political and public institutions as well as in uh, private sector. You have also evolved in terms of your uh, participation in the media, in terms of your institutions, and you are in a much, much better place. And I referred to uh, Europe as a whole as having now reached a point at 2015 where you are really at the tipping point of, uh, and, and at the point where you are ready to launch or, or welcome the third wave of your, our feminist future. So that's, that's the kind of celebratory assessment we have of Europe. But Europe is not a homogeneous entity. And all of you represented here from different regions and sub-regions carry your own concerns about what has not been achieved and what you need and what you want in the future for women and girls. So first of all, on the um, poverty side, many women in this region still face poverty and are, represent the majority of the poor including single, um, uh, single uh, parent households, uh, women-headed households. They also face, continue to face, the dilemmas of combining the productive and reproductive roles. Particularly in Central Asia, women still carry the burden of unpaid care work due to conditions of poverty and conditions of access to 
essential services and infrastructure not being there. We also have the issue of uh, participation in political life is still restricted. Parliaments, representation in parliaments, representation in the executives, heads of state, ministers, also um, in, in terms of uh, the judiciary, law enforcement agencies, public service provision institutions, all of these, the representation is still far, far away from parity. We also have in, in this region uh, the, the issues of private sector participation, the issue of uh, recruitment, retention, and promotion of women in the private sector, the leaking pipeline issue. And that was, of course, related to balancing the reproductive and productive roles, but also issues of equal pay and, and wage parity. So this, this, these kind of problems need to go away. We need to reach, and you are in the best position than most regions to reach that ideal place. And then we also have, of course, the issues of social protection, the issues of this region, like many others, but perhaps relative to uh, many other regions, has also borne the brunt of uh, the financial crisis and austerity measures that have affected uh, the, uh, both uh, uh, the social protection that is available uh, and also on the jobs crisis, the young people have been affected. And of course, there is the issue of uh, women and their rights in the context of the life cycle approach and um, the aging, uh, issues of the aging um, or, or of the elderly women. So all of those, and widows, I cannot say with, in Margaret's presence, uh, I can't say anything about uh, the special categories of uh, women uh, and intersectionality of uh, uh, d uh, multiple discriminations that women continue to face in this region. Having said that, we also need to look at uh, now and focus the global women's movement on how to clinch the deal on the post-2015 development agenda and on the implementation of 1325. These are our two important projects that will make us and help us realize the future we need and the future we want. So the, let's look at the post-2015 development agenda. If you look at that, we are now at a stage where our, what, what women and girls need in terms of voice, choice, and issue of personal integrity, security, and freedom from violence. Those three major objectives for our future, we have it now in the post-2015 development agenda. We have, for the first time, a target on ending violence against women. We have a, a economic empowerment-related uh, targets and means of implementation. We have now also equal participation in public and private institutions, in economic, political, and social institutions now inscribed in the, in the draft that has come to the General Assembly. You must raise your voices. You must strengthen the hands of your governments in endorsing this package and consolidating this package and making sure that it stays and is strengthened further. You have the very strong 
uh, uh, indication on and uh, target on sexual and reproductive health and reproductive rights, which is also fundamental. You have um, uh, targets that are now also in other goals, like water, food, and food security, um, uh, and employment, and economic growth in all of the other areas, poverty eradication. You have gender sensitive targets and, indi and indicators which we have to now develop. Now, the accountability mechanisms, that's where you will also need to make sure that governments accept that these goals and targets and the indicators that are adopted, that they will participate in, engage in, and be amenable to accountability mechanisms where civil society is fully engaged. Unless you do that, we, get, we are not going to have the future that we want. Lastly, on 1325, and this region, of course, has some conflicts from the past, some conflicts continuing, but also this region is, is looking at the world. You're not looking inwards, you're also very much engaged with the world. Many of you are leaders of global civil society. So you must also push ahead on the implementation of 1325 in all its aspects and 2122, UN Security Council 2122, and engage with the global review and study that UN Women is tasked to support and take forward. So this is the task for all of you. We cannot, first of all, in defining the future we want, I was just given the feminist agreements and demands that the Nordic women's movement put forward. So all of you, of course, are the ones that are there to articulate these demands, to, based on your experience, based on your work in the communities out there. But now we have to make sure that governments deliver, that private sector delivers, and this is something I want to really emphasize. Private sector is an important stakeholder. That's the space that we need to also conquer. So we need to have them accountable to us. So private sector and, of course, your work, your agency. And we are here to support you in every way in both defining this future, in, in recapping, uh, recapturing all the elements that Beijing and many of you I know are Beijing veterans, but also the youth. And I, I see very few good men here. We also need to engage men and boys. And that's also the task of the women's movement, that we must have a men's movement, a solidarity movement. And this is what also UN Women emphasizes. Because in our future, we cannot be alone. We need the partnership of men and boys. So let's power ahead together. And I wish you all the very best. Thank you for supporting, for creating UN Women, for supporting UN Women. And we are there for you. Thank you.